So we've been having fun taking a look at solving quadratic type equations and linear equations, and turns out it doesn't stop with just a degree two or an exponent of two. You can have equations of higher and higher and higher degrees. And those are actually examples of polynomials. And when you set them to equal to something else, then they're polynomial equations. So a polynomial equation is just a, a kind of an interesting blend of coefficients and x's to, to higher and higher powers. They're all integral. And it's just great fun. Let me show you an example of one. Because it turns out we've already established the techniques to solve even the big scary ones. Check out this awesome polynomial equation. 2x to the fifth. Wow. Now we're talking. Minus 2x cubed equals 144x. And we want to now solve this for x, find the solutions. So where do we begin? Well, think about the quadratic theme. The quadratic theme, of course, if you have a quadratic, I want everyone to come to my side of the equation and set it equal to 0, and then factor. And by factoring and have it equal 0, we have something really cool. Because we know that if I have two numbers, if I'm thinking of two numbers, and they are product, is 0, either one of them has to be 0 or the other one has to be 0. That's the only way it's going to happen. That's why we set everything equal to 0 when we have higher degrees. So it's a similar principle here. We want to actually take this equation and write an equivalent equation where we actually have it equal to 0. So let's take a look at this one here. This is not quite equal to 0. So I'll take this stuff here, this 144x, I'm going to bring it to the other side by subtracting 144 from each side, 144x from each side. If I subtract 144x from each side, then I'm going to get a 0 here, and then the other side will have lots of stuff. Let's not worry about that. I can see already your no, it's too much stuff. Just calm down. Everyone calm down. We're going to have 2x to the fifth minus 2x cubed. And now I'm subtracting 144x, and now that equals 0. So this is the equivalent equation to the first one, and this is the one that I want us to think about. Now, by the way, a couple of little pointers, insider tips here. I always write a polynomial equation, or polynomials in general, with the highest exponent. That's the highest degree up front, and then I have them go down in order. So this is a fifth, three, and then this is a x to the 1. Some people get you know, kind of confused because those big coefficients are scary. Ignore the coefficients in terms of just the ordering. I always order the largest degree and then all the way down. It makes it easier for me. Now we want to factor this. And you know what factoring means. It means pull out things that are in common, greatest common factors, whatever you want to call them. So I look at this, and what do I notice? I notice there's a common factor of 1x everywhere, right? There's an x here, an x here, and exactly 1x here. I can factor out an x. But if you can be really sneaky, I notice that all the coefficients are even which means I can actually factor out a 2. So I'm going to factor out a 2x to begin with. So I'm going to see if I can factor out 2x from uh, the left-hand side. If I take away a 2x out of this, what am I left with? Well, I'm left with just x to the fourth. And you can check that by actually multiplying 2x by x to the fourth, and you see 2x to the fifth. So it checks. So you can always check your answer, which is cool. Minus, don't forget the sign. Now, I've already factored out the 2. I've already factored out 1x, so I owe myself 2x's. That's x squared. And then here I see a minus. And now I factored out a 2 from 144. So what is that? Well, that's going to be 72. And then the x is already out here. So I close the parentheses, and that equals 0. Let's just make sure we see that. If you distribute the 2x to each of these terms, you'll actually get this expression. So that makes it a little bit easier, kind of a divide and conquer. Now I'm looking at this thing, and this still is a degree 4. It's like, ooh, what do I do here? But here's another trick. And the trick is, I notice that I've got a degree 4 here and a degree 2 here. So basically, if you remember your rules of exponents, x to the fourth is really just x squared squared. Let me say that again x to the fourth is just x squared squared. So really, what I could do is notice that this is going to be x squared squared, and this is x squared. You might even want to kind of put a little replacement in there. Maybe we can call it like um, uh, s for squared. So let's let s equal x squared. If you don't like this, by the way, don't do it. But, but here's an easy way just to kind of make it clear what's going on here. 
I can rewrite this as 2x times, and then in place of x to the fourth, I can put in s squared. Then minus, and then x squared is just s, minus 72. And now you realize, ah, look, it was a quadratic in camouflage. So now I can look at this as a quadratic and say, boy, maybe I can actually factor it. Well, let's see if I can factor it. So I'm going to have an S here and an S here. This tells me I'm going to have different signs, opposite signs, so a plus and a minus. And then uh, I need to have two numbers that multiply to give 72, but when I subtract them, I'm going to actually get um, negative 1. So what works here? Well, I think if I put an 8 in here and a 9 in here, I'm going to win because 8 times negative 9 is negative 72. And notice that 8s minus 9s is negative s. So this checks, actually. Cool. Here's a little tricky thing, though. We have to now put back what the x was or the s was, in fact. So what is s? s is just x squared. It was just a little way to help us factor. If you didn't like this, by the way, you could have actually written the following. So depending upon kind of who you are, you might have actually enjoyed just writing it this way. And some people like this, by the way. Crazy, of course, but they're out there. And then try to factor it just directly with x's. And if you like that, that's totally cool, and that's totally great. But if you have trouble kind of seeing the squared, squared kind of stuff, and that scares you, then just call it something else for a second. But now, put it back in. So I have 2x. And remember, the s is just x squared. And then the s is just x squared. And now I have to solve this. Well, so now how do I solve this? Well, I've got the product of three things equaling 0. Therefore, either the first equals 0, the second equals 0, or the third equals 0. Let's take each case separately. So let's look at the first case. So either 2x equals 0. So if 2x equals 0, if I divide both sides by 2, that tells me that x equals 0. So one solution is x equals 0. Uh, what's another solution? Well, another solution would be if this thing equals 0. So what if x squared plus 8 equals 0. And you, there's lots of ways to do this. You can factor if you want. It's a little trickier. But you could notice that, in fact, I could just bring the 8 over since there's no b term and say x squared equals negative 8. And then I can take plus or minus the square root of both sides. Since it's quadratic, there's always two answers, right? Exponent 2 answers 2. Plus or minus square root of negative 8. Now, negative 8 under square root, that's not going to be real. That is out of this world. It's a complex number. And we can simplify this a little bit and say, well, that's going to be just the square root of 8 times the square root of negative 1, which, of course, we refer to as i. And the square root of 8 is just 4, uh, 8 is just 4 times 2. The square root of 4 is just 2. And so we have plus or minus 2 square root of 2 i. So there's two answers hidden there. There's x equals 2 square root of 2 i. And also we see x equals negative 2 square root of 2i. So we have two solutions, two more solutions, to add to the 0 solution. And then finally, we have this last thing that could equal 0. So we're just taking them in cases. And you can either bring the 9 over and take plus or minus square roots, or you could recognize it's the difference of two perfect squares. I'll just do it this way just for fun. So x plus 3, x minus 3. And therefore, I see x equals negative 3, or x equals 3 are the two answers we get here. So check it out. This one polynomial equation actually has five solutions. x equals 0, x equals plus or minus 2 square root of 2i, so an imaginary, imaginary one. And then finally, um, x equals plus or minus 3. And you can actually check and plug all those in. And you'll actually see that they satisfy the original equation. By the way, I am not shocked that we got five solutions, because I see that this polynomial is of degree 5. Remember I ordered them from highest to lowest? When I see a degree 5, that tells me that there could be all the way up to five solutions. There might be fewer, but in fact, uh, there could be five or under. So I'm not surprised by seeing five, and you shouldn't either. If you solved a 
a five degree, fifth degree polynomial, and you got seven solutions, I'm telling you right now, you made a mistake because you could only have up to five. You might have one, two, three, and so forth, but you're going to have no more than five. Solving polynomial equations, really, it's just a natural extension of what we've been thinking about with linear and quadratic equations. The factoring gets a little more exciting and interesting, but you want to have everything equal to zero, factor away, and consider each of those factors equal to zero separately, and when you solve, you'll get a plethora of solutions. Enjoy solving polynomial equations on your own. I'll see you soon.